Now, again, I mentioned earlier that a lot of doctors like to, when you have, when you have forms of inflammation, one of the things that we'll see is doctors love to prescribe medicines. And so I want to point out a few things. So this diagram here, and you can learn more about this if you go visit Gluten Free Society and just type in uh, leaky gut and medicines, and you'll pull this article up. But drugs that cause gut dysfunction, it's important to understand that a lot of the medicines that are used to treat gastrointestinal inflammation can actually, long term, if they're used long term, can actually cause gastrointestinal inflammation leading to gut function. For example, we know drugs like aspirin and non steroidal anti-inflammatories, ibuprofen, right, naproxen, uh, these common anti-inflammatory medications, we know cause intestinal and stomach damage. So they, they basically, they erode the lining of the stomach. So if we kind of look at that stomach here, so the lining of the stomach is like this mucosal lining Okay, so imagine this little area here is mucus. And so what non steroidal anti-inflammatories do is if you've got mucus, and then you get this area where there is no mucus, right? Because that, again, and it's that area right here where acid and digestive chemicals and foods can start to create an irritation. Okay, and this can happen in the, in the stomach but it can also happen in the small intestine. And if that happens, what you get is an ulcer forming. It starts to form and it creates enough damage, you can get internal bleeding or, or what's called occult blood loss. And there are tests your doctor can run to measure for occult blood loss um, within your stool. Generally, occult blood loss positive fecal test means there's damage in the stomach or damage in the upper small intestine. And so again, these medicines, especially if you combine them with steroids, so steroids by themselves and NSAIDs, non steroidal anti-inflammatories, can both damage the stomach and small intestine, but when you combine them, the effect is synergistic, so you get an even worse potential scenario. Now, it's not that, I don't want to, I don't want to scare everybody here away from ever taking any of these if you need them, it's, but the issue is long-term use over time leads to this damage which can recreate a new problem for you and that's what you want to be aware of. And then we have other things that can cause you know, dysfunction in the GI tract or other medications rather. So you, you, any of you who've been on chemotherapy or other chemotherapeutic types of agents, whether that be oral or IV, those can damage the GI tract. We know that uh, antibiotics can damage the GI tract, knocking out the natural flora, increasing the risk for the development of yeast overgrowth. We know that yeast can be highly inflammatory when they're, when they're out of control, and they can create a lot of gastrointestinal inflammatory problems. So again, a lot of times the, the normal kind of standard of care for a lot of people with gastrointestinal inflammation is they get put on kind of this combination. A lot of people get put on antacids and those antacids suppress stomach acid. And if you, you know, if you need, you understand why you need stomach acid. One of the functions of stomach acid is to help you digest your protein, which helps you get nourishment. And remember, the lining of your GI tract is a muscle, and you need protein to maintain it. So if over time you're you're suppressing acid, you're what you're actually doing is suppressing long-term protein digestion, but also you're suppressing vitamin and mineral absorption. Antacids cause magnesium deficiency. They can, uh, they can contribute to vitamin B12 deficiency. They can contribute to other minerals like calcium and iron deficiency. So very important that you understand that the use of these can create malnutrition that can lead to an inability or, or, or a reduction in your capacity to heal. So I'm gonna move this out of the way here because I wanna pull this next one up. And since we're on the topic of nutrients, so we're talking about drugs that can cause gut dysfunction, which can lead to malnutrition. So we know the medicines can do this. Okay, so we know directly the medicines can do this, but we also know that a gluten can cause malabsorption and lead to vitamin and mineral deficiency. So these seven nutrients, now these aren't the only seven nutrients that are important for gut health, but I wanted to give you kind of some of the big hitters. These are ones that uh, when, when deficient, and these are very commonly um, these nutritional deficiencies are very common in somebody with a history of gluten exposure. So I just, what I'm sharing with you are common things that we see, 
but also sharing with you think nutrients that play a major, major role in how your gut functions. So for example, zinc deficiency, zinc deficiency, we know if it's severe enough, actually causes diarrhea and leaky gut. It can cause intestinal permeability. That's why many of these products that you might see like nutritional support products on the internet contain zinc as one of the active ingredients to support, again, gut permeability um, in the opposite direction. In other words, to support the sealing and the healing of the GI tract lining. And then vitamin A, vitamin A deficiency, just like zinc, can also cause diarrhea and leaky gut. So we know that zinc and vitamin A are both critical because they help seal the gut. Now, one of the things vitamin A is important for is cell turnover. So aside from that, the cells in the GI tract have about a two to five day, up to seven day lifespan. That means they have to turn over very rapidly. Uh, imagine if you're, if you know, the thing of it like this, if your lifespan were seven days, by the time you were six years old, it'd be like you were an 80 year old, right? And so think of your gut cells in that way. By the time they're six days old, it's like an 80 year old gut cell that's ready to die and give birth to a new cell to take its place. And so you need vitamin A for this to happen. So the cell turnover to replicate those cells very rapidly, you need that vitamin A to do that. And so without vitamin A, these cells, they live longer than what they should. They lose their functionality and this can damage the ability for the gut, basically for that lining to make a new lining. So for these cells to make new cells, to replicate uh, a fresh new lining of cells that are new, that are functioning at high capacity. So you need that vitamin A. So again, vitamin A is important for that cell turnover. Then we've got vitamin D. We know that vitamin D deficiency actually in many studies has been shown to cause directly inflammatory bowel problems. So in one of the reasons why is it regulates inflammation. We know that vitamin D regulates the immune cells, so it helps to regulate the, the strength at which an immune cell responds or reacts. And so with autoimmunity, when vitamin D is absent, uh, autoimmune disease symptoms can actually increase. We know too that vitamin D is important uh, for maintaining a healthy microbiome. So for maintaining the gut bacteria and the health of the gut bacteria, vitamin D is very, very critical. Aside from the fact that it does other things, vitamin D is also important for your intestinal cells to be able to properly absorb calcium. So if you're low in vitamin D, this is one of the reasons why vitamin D deficiency causes calcium deficiency and can lead to, remember why calcium is important, it's not just important for your bones, it's an electrolyte. And so it helps your nerves communicate to your other nerves. It helps your brain communicate to your gut. It helps your gut communicate to your brain through the electrical properties of how nerve conduction works. You need calcium so that vitamin D deficiency can lead to low calcium, which can lead to low neurological communication. And then we have magnesium deficiency. Magnesium deficiency has been linked to altered gut flora and it's been linked to poor healing. So when you don't heal, remember we're talking about inflammatory gastrointestinal problems. Again, the critical element, the, the paradox of, a, of an inflamed gut, right, is that when the gut is, in order to get nourishment, vitamins and minerals, carbs, fats, proteins, those are called essential nutrients, in order to get them, you need your GI tract to be intact and you need to be working and preferably that's not inflamed, right? And so, if you're, but here's the catch 22, the paradox. If the gut's inflamed, it loses its capacity to digest and absorb these nutrients. So when that happens, right, the whole premise and purpose of the gut is now diminished. And so when it's diminished, how do we heal the tissue? How does the gut get its nutrition? Well, it gets nutrition from the food that we eat. And so, but if the gut is already inflamed and it's been inflamed for years, then malabsorption might be a very real issue. So for the gut to receive that nutrition, it's not functioning properly, it's not digesting properly, so it's harder for it to get the nutrition it needs. Again, that's the paradox, is that to heal the gut, you need nutrients. To get nutrients, you need a functioning gut. And this is where a lot of people get trapped, right? They get stuck in that scenario. And so this is where it becomes, if you're there, it becomes a very smart move on your part to work with somebody, to work with the doctor to help you get that inflammation under control so that you can start getting better nutrition from the food that's eating. Now, one of the ways we get inflammation under control is we control the source of the inflammation. What is the primary source of inflammation? 
Well, tonight's topic is gluten-induced inflammation of the GI tract, right? So looking at whether or not a person needs to go gluten-free, of removing food allergens, removing processed chemically loaded food, uh, is a good place to start at getting that inflammation under control so the gut is no longer just burning down. Okay, then we have iron on the list. Iron deficiency is also linked to gut flora imbalances. You, but here's the thing about iron. So we know that the bleeding, I showed you a minute ago that gastrointestinal inflammation can lead to damage, right? That damage can lead to loss of iron through bleeding. So when we bleed internally, when we have occult blood loss, we actually are losing iron. Our body's not recycling that iron. And so we can become slowly over time iron deficient. Why is iron important? Well, if you ever studied biology, a red blood cell kind of looks like this. And red blood cells hold oxygen. But for it to do that, you've got this protein. Oops. Yeah, let's do that. Let's make that red. So you got this protein inside the red blood cell. It kind of looks like this. It's hemoglobin. Right? At hemoglobin, is what allows for that oxygen to attach. And so what happens if your iron, low iron leads to inability or low levels of hemoglobin, which means your red blood cells are less efficient at carrying that oxygen. So what happens is you get less oxygen. When your tissues get less oxygen, they don't heal. They don't recover as well. All of your ability to make energy uh, through breaking down your food is oxygen dependent. So there's only actually only one way that isn't oxygen dependent. And if you've ever heard the term anaerobic metabolism, that's what happens when you're working out and your muscle starts to burn really bad and then you have to stop and recover. It's because your body doesn't have enough oxygen to maintain lifting that heavy weight. So what ends up happening is it shifts gears to anaerobic metabolism. So it's not using oxygen to generate energy, but the byproduct of that is lactic acid. And if you are in a chronic anemic state, that anaerobic shift leads to pain. Pain in your muscles, uh, pain to move, and so then you become you, you can get chronic you can become chronically in pain. But you also have to remember it's not just your muscles, not just like your physical muscles. It's also your smooth muscle. So what is your smooth muscle? Well, your gut, your GI tract is a smooth muscle. It's a it's a long tube, right, with a circular layer of muscle around it, and that muscle is under the control of the nervous system. It's how we have bowel movements. It's how we know how fast or slow the food traverses from your mouth to your anus to get the nutrition from it. So if you're in an anaerobic shift and you don't have adequate oxygen to generate proper energy for muscles to contract and relax properly, you can develop constipatory like IBS, irritable bowel syndrome. So not inflammatory bowel, but irritable bowel as a result of this type of process. So again, it's very important that you have enough iron uh, going back to why this is one of the big reasons why. And then we have selenium. Selenium supports detoxification through your liver and through the production of glutathione. It's one of its important functions. And if your liver's overwhelmed, what will happen is your bile production will be compromised. But the deficiency of selenium, particularly in research, is right here. You can see it's implicated okay, in the progression of irritable or of inflammatory bowel disease. So selenium deficiency itself, there's research that shows that when people are low in selenium, their bowel inflammation progresses and gets worse. So this is one of those that it's very important to maintain healthy gut function and you don't want to see this dropping as a result of chronic inflammation. And then the last nutrient on our list today is L-glutamine. L-glutamine is the primary fuel source for intestinal cells. So when I say intestinal, what I'm referring to is I'm referring to the small intestine. So your small intestine uses glutamine as its main fuel source. Your large intestine uses butyrate or butyric acid, which is a byproduct of fiber and healthy bacteria. But your small intestine uses glutamine. And so this is another reason why you'll see glutamine in a, in a lot of your kind of combination products around supporting, you know, leaky gut and gut health. So deficiency can contribute to inflammation, it can contribute to leaky gut, it can contribute to your, your, your intestinal cells' ability to replicate. Again, we said that cell turnover is you know, anywhere from two to seven days. 
without glutamine, these cells are not going to replicate as effectively or as efficiently, so it can create a real big problem for you. So again, these nutrients are very, very critical. So again, going back to this, if you are on medicine that causes gut damage in its long-term use, things like antacids, or if you're on medicines that we know cause nutritional deficiencies, steroids deplete vitamin D, steroids um, deplete zinc, okay, antacids deplete magnesium. Uh, there's, there's research that shows that antacids per, uh, reduce iron as well. So again, just depending on what you're taking, for example, another one is aspirin. Aspirin depletes iron and aspirin can deplete vitamin C, which is also important, not on our list, but it's also an important nutrient for gut healing, especially in those with a history of celiac disease. We actually know that some research shows that a vitamin C deficiency will make it very hard for somebody with pre-existing celiac disease to recover from the inflammatory process. So the medicines that you're using might be interfering with your nutrition in a manner that's consistent with a, an enough great um, ability to prevent you from getting the nutrition that you need to be able to heal and repair from that damage. So very important to an analyze that. Hey, don't forget to check out the rest of the series right here. Make sure you hit subscribe below. And as always, thanks for tuning in.